Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture in the topic of STEMI and today we are speaking about an interesting topic which is left main equivalence. Today we are speaking about how to diagnose left main equivalent pattern in ECG and what is its clinical significance. First of all, what do we mean by left main equivalent? Left main equivalent, it means that it is a STEMI patient. We are speaking here about STEMI patient with this culprit vessel, either a significant left main stenosis or rarely occlusion or combined significant LED and LCX stenosis or occlusion. So the culprit here is the left main itself or combined culprit in LED and LCX. So what are its ECG features in order to be able to diagnose left main equivalent? It means that there is ST depression of more than or equal 1 mm in 6 or more surface ECG leads. So we are speaking about infralateral ST depression plus ST elevation in EVR and or V1 of more than or equal 1 mm. So you are speaking here about ST elevation in 1 or 2 leads only and diffuse ST depression mostly in the infralateral ECG leads. So what are the possibilities for left main equivalence? The first possibility is that all of us suspect is left main infection. The culprit vessel here is a left main coronary artery. Multivessel coronary artery disease is another possibility, of course, that the patient has multivessel significant coronary artery disease, which may be a new insult or may be long-standing infection. Culprit is both LED and LCX, of course, is another important possibility. Sometimes the patient may have proximal LED or LC exclusion, with exclusion of one of a major left coronary artery that was filled by collaterals from the patent LED or LCX vessels. So if one of them is affected or occluded, so the net result is the two vessels are affected now because one of them was dependent on the other for the collateral circulation. So what we can see in this ACG? We can see here that the patient has a C elevation in V1 and EVR, which is more pronounced at EVR, reaching about 2 mm magnitude, plus diffuse ST depression involving in the limb leads lead 1, 2, 3, and EVF, plus from V3 to V6. So we are speaking here about diffuse infralateral ST depression and ST elevation of V1 and EVR, so its characteristic pattern of the left main equivalent. Let's see another example here. We can see here as well. That the patient has ST elevation in V1 and AVR, and is significant, of course, here in both nearly equal magnitudes, and there is diffuse ST depression here involving from 1, 2, 3, and AVF, plus that just leads also from V3 to V6. So, here about speaking about infralateral diffuse ST depression plus ST elevation V1 and AVR, so it is characteristic left main equivalent. Although, of course, some of you would say that some patients we have this ECG pattern as a chronic finding. When you check his previous ECG, you discover that this the same pattern was present in all his old ECGs, so most probably he is having chronic multi coronary artery disease. But whenever you see left main equivalent and you don't have any previous documentation, left main equivalent is considered as an equivalent for STEMI, and so this patients need primary PCI. So when a patient comes to the ER complaining with new onset typical chest pain and he's having left main equivalent pattern in his ECG, please don't say that this patient is just non-ST elevation acute crying syndrome and admit him to the CCU based on the presence of ST depression and suggest please no, he is considered as a STEMI and he needs to have primary PCI. And then after the crying angiography, we are going to decide whether we are going to perform PCI for the collateral, for the culprit vessel or arrange for cabbage if PCI is not feasible for this patient, but the patients need urgent coronary angiography. So the culprit vessel here will be found in most of the cases and you will need urgent revascularization. For example, I may find that there is total LED occlusion and I can leave the LCX or I may need to intervene in both. Especially that some of these patients are not just chemical plus one, it may be cal plus two, three or four, and so the patients need urgent revascularization, so please put this step in your mind. So, of course, there is a question that is ST elevation in EVR specific for left main coronary artery? Whenever I find ST elevation EVR, does this mean that sure I have left main coronary artery affection? The answer is not always this case. ST elevation in EVR may also be seen with proximal or near osteo LED occlusion, of course without affection of the LCX or the left main. Severe multivessel disease, of course, is a reason for this, and in some patients it may be a chronic pathology that leads to chronic pattern of left main equivalent in all serial ECGs. Sometimes diffuse subendocardial ischemia, like in case of oxygen supply and demand mismatch following resuscitation from cardiac arrest, in case of high shock, the patient may show this pattern. 
This paragraph, which I quoted from this link, it mentions that some authors argue that using the term left main inclusion is inaccurate, as most of these patients have at least some flow in the left main, because a complete left main occlusion would rapidly lead to frank stemi and cardiogenic shock, and this patient will not survive to reach the cath lab. So it is most probably left main stenosis with some flow in the left main coronary artery, not total occlusion. So we here have another ECG showing the left main equivalent pattern. But here we can see here that the ST elevation in EVR is much more than ST elevation in V1. Nearly we can see ST elevation in V1. Just the ST elevation in EVR and the diffuse ST depression in the infralateral leads. So here most probably the patient may have left main lesion based on the fact that the ST elevation EVR is much more than the ST elevation in V1. Whereas here we can see here that ST elevation EVR is nearly the same like ST elevation in V1 regarding the magnitude or maybe less. And so I can expect that this patient culprit vessel may be just proximal or near osteal LED occlusion, not the left main itself. So when the ST elevation EVR is more than V1, at the time I expect that the left main vessel is affected vessel. Whereas when I see that the ST elevation in V1 is more or equal to ST elevation EVR, maybe just proximal or near osteal LED occlusion. Of course, the higher the magnitude of ST elevation EVR and the higher the mortality and the worse prognosis. And the more diffuse ST depression and the more the magnitude of ST depression, this is also much more significant for the higher risk of mortality and worse prognosis. And so beware of left main equivalent. Don't take it easy based on the absence of ST elevation except just in V1 EVR. No, this patient is considered as a STEMI patient and should be regarded as this. So at the end of this lecture, we understood today how to diagnose left main equivalent in ECG and we learned about its clinical significance and beware. Presence of diffuse ST depression ECG should raise attention of left main equivalent and you should check left V1 and AVR for ST elevation. In this case, you will consider the patient as STEMI and left main equivalent is a left main equivalent is considered as a STEMI and should be referred for primary PCI, not just non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome for CCU admission and early invasive. So put this step in your mind. Thank you very much for your watching.